I never made a living wage when I worked in publishing. This is the title of an article I recently came across written by Miss Bethany Ball, where she talks about genuinely, realistically, honestly, what it looked like when she was working as an editorial assistant. Um, I think she did this in the 90s, if I, if I uh, recall correctly, but I just thought we could kind of go through this together and get a conversation going as always. Um, now, based on my research, I did a little bit of Googling to make sure I was doing her justice, but it looks like Bethany Ball is the author of two books. She received her MFA from Sarah Lawrence and was shortlisted for the Center for Fiction's First Novel Prize and the Jewish Book Council Debut Fiction Prize, which just is incredibly <laughs> impressive. Now this article starts off with her being interviewed by an HR representative who was heavily scrutinizing her resume. And uh, she noticed that she changed jobs very frequently, asked why this was, and simply put, the author said that she needed more money. Her eyes narrowed. Are you only interested in the money? My face flushed. Of course I was interested in the money. It goes without saying. The need for money is why one works. And off the bat, I just really like her honesty. Like, that's what we all want to say in a job interview. Like, so what, so what drew you to this job? It's like, well, you know, I'm out of work. I need a paycheck. Like, some people just do jobs for the paycheck. It's great if you can get both, if you get the passion and the paycheck. But I would say that maybe that tends to be a little more of the exception rather than the norm, depending on the type of industry that you're in, the business that you're in. But really, any, any of the uh, arts or their humanities are just known for not paying much. So personally, I kind of liked how she was just sort of out with it. Like, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. I need more money. Now, after being declined, she went back home and did the math and realized that her pay would hardly cover the childcare costs needed while she was at work or even the travel expenses needed to commute into the city, which happened to be New York City because that's where all the publishers live. And if I'm being honest, this is sort of what just bugs me about the arts in general is that you are supposed to be doing it for the joy of it. It's almost like you're made out to be kind of the, like the slimy person to say that you're doing it for the money, which if that's like your only reason, I feel like there's other professions where, you know, you might be compensated a little bit better if you just truly don't care what job you do as long as you get a paycheck, which I mean, I totally get it. Books are not that avenue though, my friend, but at least with books, maybe even with teaching, with music, it just seems like you're supposed to be okay with doing it because you like it. And unfortunately, as a grown adult, you cannot make money from the bare minimum. So this is where the author gives us a little bit of context. We sort of start with the present and then go back in time and see how she came to be. She started out 25 years ago working as an editorial assistant making $19,000 per year. She said it wasn't even a living wage then. Actually, actually, I have an inflation calculator. I could see what the equivalent of that would be right now. And if, if it's the same, I might shed a tear. So I plugged in 1999, and if we're doing, what was it, $19,000? That would be the equivalent of $35,000 in today's money, which is just, they bumped it up from 35 to like 40 or 45 over like the past decade or something, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, which is just kind of sad if I'm being honest. Anyway, she made $19,000 25 years ago as an editorial assistant, which would be the equivalent of $35,000 today. Uh, it wasn't a living wage even then. And during that period, she lost her apartment, squatted in an abandoned building, showered at the Y, lived off dry oatmeal in the office kitchen between paychecks, looked for stray quarters and phone booths and washing machines back when, you know, there were like phone booths and stuff. And it honestly, when I was reading about her just listing off her living conditions with this pay, it sort of reminded me of this book that came out recently that was probably... It, I think it was probably my favorite book that I've read this year called I Survived Capitalism and All I Got Was This Lousy T-Shirt by Madeline Pendleton. It's a totally rad, it, it's just a really rad book. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, it's just a very realistic thing. And her her standard of living was it, was, it was just very, very similar to what I'm reading about with this article. So it just made me think of that in case you're looking for a book recommendation. It's a memoir. Anyway, she left the publishing house that she was at 25 years ago kind of hopped over to a different one, made a few thousand dollars more. She'd saved enough at that point to get her own room and I guess just kind of tried to make it work from there. Now, what's also really frustrating about this, and she comments on this too in her article, 
Um, the big five publishing ho houses, which are, like the name implies, the top five large presses in the United States, and I would even argue probably in the world, in her words, I'm taking this from the article, she says they pay these wages because they have always paid these wages, not because they can't afford to pay better. And it's not the first time that I've heard a version of this. There's almost kind of like a, well, I did it so you have to do it kind of process. I don't know if it varies between large or small or midsize or what, I, I don't really know. But it's not the first time that I've heard this, of that it's almost like a vetting process of like, who are the real ones? Who are the ones who really want it? Who are the, who are the ones who are willing to sacrifice themselves, their mental health, you know, just living off of dried oatmeal in order to make a name for themselves or to take a gamble on the industry, work hard enough, overwork basically, while getting underpaid in hopes of maybe making it up to the higher ranks one day. I just think, I just think there's something that's just twisted about that. It is not the first time I've heard that and she comments on this as someone who's, you know, who's a former editorial assistant. They paid you, they, if they can afford, in my opinion, okay, so I'm, I'm having a bit of a soapbox moment. If they can afford to pay, first-time authors, six-figure book advances, I would rather that go to the employees and to some of the freelancers because if you have a happy, healthy team that takes pride in the work that they do and feel recognized for it, I'm gonna feel really good about the kind of company that I'm working for. I'm not commenting on anyone in particular. I'm not, I'm just commenting on the culture of it. And this is where she kind of takes the rest of the article to sort of explain some of her thoughts and some of her takeaways. And I thought that they were very interesting. She said that publishing jobs are for the wealthy, who can afford to live off their trust fund or their parents or their spouse, which makes total sense. I I was working as a teacher, okay? I worked as a teacher for one year, it was sixth grade. It was a very scary and intimidating experience. Grateful for it, but would never want to repeat it. I was making probably $35,000, the equivalent, $35,000 at the time. And I was living with my parents um, because I was able to. I was fortunate enough to be able to lean on my parents for for room and board, basically. I had very minimal expenses. So taking a job like this, $19,000 at the time, $35,000 equivalent, I mean, it's, it's like the, that's like the only way that you can do it, is that if you have someone else to support you. Another point that she made too was that low wages keep out those with less means and those from marginalized communities in particular. She says, we were told that all editorial assistants had it hard. We were told we were paying our dues and we were told it was necessary. So this kind of goes back to what I said before of just like, sort of like the vetting culture of it, of like, if you're a real one, you'll stick around and make a name for yourself. And it's just, when I read about stuff like this, it's just, it's so frustrating because even with uh, job hunting, I recently made a video on my experience hunting for jobs in the book business and it was just, so, so hard. I am a white woman who comes from a middle-class family. Like I am definitely privileged. It's if I had a hard time making it into the, you know, to some of these publishing jobs, I can't even imagine what it must be like for other, you know, diverse underrepresented people who could really, really add a lot of value to, you know, something that is known for being a predominantly white, wealthy kind of industry, which is sort of ironic because they pay their editorial assistants $19,000 25 years ago. <laughs> the impression that I get talking about something like that, it makes me uncomfortable. And the impression that I get is it's one of those things that's understood, but never said. That's just sort of the vibe that I get every time I like read about these things or dive into it myself and I wanna learn more about it and why this is the case. It's just, that's just the vibe that I get. It's always been this way. You just pay your dues and then maybe one day you'll make it. And it just seems like it's understood, but never acknowledged. I don't know. That's just the vibe that I'm getting here. Um, but I'm, I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. So feel free to leave your comments below. If you have any stories or things that you want to share with me personally or privately, I created an email just for YouTube called Lauren Erickson YT at gmail.com in case you wanna share anything with me personally. If you don't wanna comment something publicly, that's absolutely fine. Or if you even wanna just submit ideas for me for things that I can talk about. But I just thought this was kind of an interesting little article to share. Again, it's called I Never Made a Living Wage When I Worked in Publishing by Bethany Ball and it's on electricliterature.com in case you wanna check it out. I'm gonna leave it leave it in the description box below. But I don't know, it is a conversation starter for sure. So I hope you got something out of this video. And um, if you did, feel free to like and subscribe, helps other people find the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Take care until then, okay? See you later.